Good morning, guys. Sorry I am out today. We have our playoff double header where we get to go beat St. Ann Pacelli. And then hopefully I don't got to go anywhere tomorrow. Today we're going to continue our discussion on independent and dependent events. Okay, so remember independent, dependent. The difference between independent and dependent was in an independent event, event A does not affect the probability of event B. So we just take our probability of A and multiply it by the probability of B. So we see our first example. A coin is tossed and a six-sided die is rolled. So when we flip our coin, it has no impact on what we roll when we roll our die. So we want the probability of landing on heads and rolling a three on our die. So we just take our handy dandy probability formula. We want heads and three. The answer key is also posted on Google Classroom so you guys can follow along with that or you can follow along with your blank notes that you're going to be given. Either way, it's up to you. Just make sure you're paying attention. So we want the probability of rolling a heads. So for a coin, you got two outcomes. You got heads or tails. So the probability is one out of two. There's your bell. Emergency, pardon interruption. Could we please have the high school golf team meet on the turf field behind the high school for pictures? High school golf team is dismissed for pictures at this time. You heard Miss Fancher. If you're on the high school golf team at 2.50 on Tuesday or Wednesday, you need to get your butt out there and take your picture. But let's get back to our problem. So now we want to know what is the probability of rolling a 3 on our 6-sided die. So there's a 1 out of 6 chance of that happening. When we multiply fractions. We just multiply straight across. 1 times 1 is 1. And then 2 times 6 is 12. So the probability that we flip heads and roll a 3 is 1 out of 12. Let's skip down to number 4 because everybody likes pizza. School survey found that 9 out of 10 students like pizza. I don't know who that other student is, but he's a weirdo. If three students are chosen at random with replacement... Okay, there's that key word that's going to help us remember that this is an independent event and not a dependent event. What is the probability that all three students like pizza? So this is a random random thing. Me telling Katina that she li I like pizza does not affect her liking pizza. And Katina telling Ansley that she likes pizza does not affect her liking pizza. Okay, so I like it, Katina likes it, and Ansley likes it. We want to know the probability that all three of us enjoy pizza. Okay, so according to our survey, 9 out of 10 say they like it. And then another 9 out of 10 say they like it. And finally, 9 out of 10 say they like it. Because it's a compound event, we're going to multiply all the way across. Okay, which gives me 9 times 9 times 9. 9 cubed is 729. 10 cubed is 1,000. So there is the probability, whoa, that all three people, when asked, like pizza. Those are our independent events. Remember, independent, the outcome of the first does not affect the outcome of our second. Now, when we talk about dependent events, okay, dependent events the outcome of A will affect the outcome of B. Our key words here are without replacement. If I see without replacement, I know that I need to address it okay, because it's not going to allow me to continue. So we hit over to number, page two. Okay, So let's look at number six. An aquarium contains six male goldfish and four female goldfish. Please stop by and Mr. Vi random pets. You randomly select the fish from the tank. You do not replace it. So there it is. There is my keyword. Do not replace it. 
and then you are randomly selecting a second fish. I don't know if you've ever gone to a fish tank and seen people try to catch them. That might be the most random thing on the planet because those fish are fast and do not want to be hooked in that net. Okay, so we want to know what is the probability that both fish are male. Okay, so we look at the first fish. Fish. So our first fish, okay, there's 10 fish total in our tanks. Okay, so we scoop it down in there. The probability that we pick a male is 6 out of 10. Okay, we take our handy dandy male fish, we put them in the cool little thing that hangs on the side of the tank, okay, and we're going back for our second fish. Hey, remember, we did not put, okay, we did not put our first fish back, so we want to know now what is the probability that we scoop back in there and find ourselves another male fish. Well, since we have removed one, we're going to go ahead and assume that we selected a male goldfish the first time. Hey, okay, we're going to say now there's only five males left, and there's only ten fish left total. Okay, so again, we got our two simple events that happen. Now we want to find our compound. So we want a probability of male, male. Okay, so the probability of selecting the first male was 6 out of 10. Probability of selecting our second male is 5 out of 9. Okay, multiply our fractions straight across. And I get 30 out of 90. And of course, we can reduce that to be one third. So the probability of reaching in that tank and getting two male fish is one out of three. Let's check out our next one. A random sample of parts coming off a machine is done by an inspector. He found out that five out of 100 parts are bad on average. If he were to do a new sample, what is the probability that he picks a bad part, does not put it back, and then picks another bad part? Okay. Key word again, does not replace. There is our dependent event. The outcome of the first depends on the outcome of the second. All right, so I want the probability of bad piece bad piece. You guys always like real world examples. This actually happens on assembly lines all across the country when they're spot checking for accuracy. They pull it off. They can determine now how many did I pull out of those pull out of those pulled. I can determine a probability of an, of a device being bad. So the probability that I reach onto that assembly line and pull a bad piece is 5 out of 100. Okay? I am going to keep that bad piece off. Okay, so that means it's going to reduce the amount of bad pieces present from 5 to 4, and it reduces the total number present from 100 to 99. Multiply straight across, I get 2220 20 over 9,900. Pretty good odds for a company. Probably a little bit higher than they want, though, which reduces to 1 out of 495 bad parts. So what it's saying is if these if I send a hundred items out to my customers, okay, there is a one in four hundred and ninety-five percent chance that one person is going to get a bad part followed by a second bad part. So this is a little new, okay? How to determine whether or not our events are independent. So what we're going to do is we're going to substitute what we know, okay? So the probability of A and B, so my little upside down intersection, that's remember that means and, the probability of A and B equals the probability of A times the probability of B. If our left side equals our right side, then we have an independent study. If it's not equal, it's not independent. Okay, so if it doesn't work out, we can say that it's not independent. So let's take a look. Okay, let the event M, which is taking math class, and the event S, taking science class, and then the event M and S, where you take both math and science. 
Suppose the probability of taking math is 0.6, the probability of science is 0.5, and the probability of math and science is 0.3. R, M, and S independent. So we're going to show it in set notation first. So I've got the probability of math, so PM, times the probability of science equal the probability of math intersection science. Okay, so the probability of math was 0 0.6, 0 0.6. Probability of science is 0 0.5. And the probability of both, according to this, are 0 0.3. When I multiply 0 0.6 and 0 0.5, I get 0 0.3. So I know because of multiplying my independent probabilities and equaling my compound probabilities that these are independent. So the answer would be yes, we are independent. Okay. In our last problem, we've got a class in which 60% of students are female. 50% of all students in that class have long hair. 45% of students are female and have long hair. Of the female students, 75% have long hair. Let F be the event that a student is female. L be the event that a student has long hair. One student is picked randomly. Are the events of being female and having long hair independent? So they threw a little bit of extra in here. Okay. They threw extra. All right. So are the events of being female and having long hair independent? So I've got to go back and I've got to dig because they gave me some extra stuff. So what are my pieces? So I need the probability that a student is female. So in my class, 60% of the students are female. Boom. Okay. The probability now that they're female or that a student has long hair Okay, in this class, 50% of students have long hair. 45% of students are female and have long hair. Of the female students, 75% have long hair. I feel like that extra piece at the end is just there to throw you off. Okay, Notice the difference between what they've got going on. Of the female students, 75% have long hair. The wording is different. So when you look at it, what is the probability that the event, when picked at random, they will be female and have long hair? So that's where it's trying to trick you. Okay. So there is the number they want us to get. Okay. They're trying to trick us with that extra 75%. So don't let them do that. You guys are smarter than that. And then, of course, we have our other piece. 50% of all students in the class have long hair. Okay, so we're going to take our math, okay, we're going to multiply them together, okay, because this piece right here, 50% of all students have long hair, has no bearing on the outcome of this problem, because I don't care about the male students that have long hair. It doesn't affect me, okay? The male students are not part of this event, so I want to know the probability of female Okay, and on the probability of having a female with long hair, okay, and then I want to know the probability that it is female and have long hair. So probability of both. Okay, so that 50% of students, there's our trick. That's what they're trying to get us. Doesn't mess, doesn't like it at all. Okay, 60% female, there's our 0.6. 75% of those females have long hair, so 0.75. And according to our thing, 45% of female students are, 45% uh, of students are female and have long hair. Multiply 0.6 and 0.75 together, and we find out that 0.45 is equal to 0.45. So yes, our events are independent. Okay. 
Statistics is fun, but again, we've got to read thoroughly to make sure I understand what's happening. You guys will complete the worksheet. You will give it back to your sub before you leave. If you are absent, I will have it posted online for you to do. The only piece that we will grade in class on Monday, or Friday, excuse me, the only piece that will be graded is I will give you back your physical worksheet. So the physical worksheet must be turned in before you leave. That means everybody, if you are present in the building and you come to geometry class, you must give your worksheet to the substitute before you leave. All right, guys. Have a great day. Thank you.